find it? It's in the very beginning of your Bible. Right after con uh, the concordance, not the concordance, whatever, the index part. Last week we talked about connection, that we were created to connect, that there's something about us. And we, we used a guy named Eutychus. Remember, Eutychus was in a three story window. Paul was preaching and around midnight. Eutychus fell out of a window, and when he fell, the scripture says, and Paul went down and fell on him, embracing him, said, trouble not yourself, for his life was still in him. That was such an important part because, and we mentioned that uh, his name was Eutychus. You remember his name because you would have cussed too if somebody preached that long and you fell out of a window. <laughs> when he hit the ground, Paul embraced him. He held him. He, he touched him. And in touching him, the scripture says, he said, no more crying. There's life in him. He gave him of his life. He, there was a transference, if you would. Every now and then in life, we just need to touch. Sometimes we need a word. We just need a word, but then there are times you need to touch. We talked about Peter's mother-in-law in Matthew chapter 8, verse 13. When Jesus came into Peter's house, he saw Peter's mother-in-law lying in bed with fever. He touched her hand, and the fever left her, and she got up and began to wait on him. When evening came, many who were demon-possessed were brought to him. He drove them out with the spirits with a word. So he spoke a word. Sometimes it was a touch. Sometimes it was a telling. And a word and healed the sick. This was to fulfill what was spoken by the prophets. What I liked about this message, this thought last week, was that after she was touched, Peter's mother-in-law, she got up and waited on him. And we use this thought very quickly that a waiter always waits on you and when they wait on you if you go to a restaurant and they wait they're going to ask you for your order and when they you give them their order there's an appreciation for people who have loved ministry i, I love my pastor he touched my life he's always been there i, I will wait on him I, if he gives me an order i'm i'm going to do my best to do it that's just how i feel and when jesus touched peter's mother-in-law she waited on him that waiting is important i i'm a good tipper i'm a good tipper i mean i i have tipped hundred dollar bills and seen whole families come to church I mean, just, I, I just do it. And, and, because, and we, there's something about a good tip. I was at Sonic a couple of uh, days ago, and I tipped the girl real good, three times more than the meal cost. Do you know what that girl did? Every time she come out of that building, you good? <laughs> Are you good? You need salt, pepper? You need any napkins, anything? You good? You know what she's doing? That tip affected her, amen, and she began to wait a little bit different than normally with the nickels and the quarters. And I reminded her, I used to be a burger flipper at the Sonic, and I remember how the car hops were treated, and I wasn't going to treat them that way if I go to the Sonic. Amen. As a matter of fact, well, I won't even go to the Sonic unless I got enough money to be a blessing to them. I'll just go somewhere else. So he waited on her. He did something for her. The Scripture says, they that wait on the Lord will renew their strength. There's rewards for waiting. If I wait on him, if I, if I give him a moment, I, I renew my strength, I'll mount up with wings as eagles, I can run and not be weary. These are three things you need, particularly as you start moving up in age. You need to wait on him, amen, to get your strength rewarded, amen. It's a powerful thing. Now, now I want to talk to you about this great separation that took place between man and God. Amen. It just as a plant dies when it's detached from its source. On the way here, my grandson has these ways of things. He'll, he'll stare at a ditch and he'll say, Papa, what if that ditch had fish in it and then, the, and then, the, and then it dried up? I mean, he's always thinking fish. <laughs> what if it dried up? What would you do? I said, well, we'd have to get the fish out of the ditch and get them to the water because it, if the fish are removed from their source, they will die. If the birds are moved from the air, they will die. If we're removed from our source, we will die. So we need our source in our life. Let's skip down very quickly here and read a little scripture, and then I'll come back and tell you what I want to tell you. Genesis chapter 2, verse 15. The Lord God took the man and put him in the Garden of Eden to work it. Everybody say work. And take care of it. By the way, Adam had a job before he got his Eve. Just want to tell you that, all right? And the Lord God commanded the man, you are free to eat from any tree in the garden, but you must not eat from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, for when you eat of it, you will surely die. Father, I thank you for your word. I ask you for just the anointing, your blessing, your help, your strength today. 
This is a great congregation. These are great people. I thank you for all the things you've done in their life throughout the week. God, we ask that you continue to do that. Help us understand life in this, in this time that we're here. In Jesus' name. Everyone say Amen. Amen. God bless you. I'm praying for you to get a miracle. I'm praying for God's blessing on your life. I'm praying for you to understand and get revelation of what I'm fixing to tell you. When mankind fell at the fall, what we call in the garden, I just told you that God told Adam, don't touch it. What did he do? Wet paint. You see wet paint, you touch it. You just can't, you cannot help yourself. Amen. There's just something about it. At the fall, we lost our sense of identity, our self-worth, as well as our sense of personal value and significance to the world. Basically, man lost his sense of who he is, where he came from, what he's capable of, where he's going and why he exists. Being cut off from our original purpose, we function below our true abilities and potential. I, I have yet to believe that any of us have reach the full potential that God has in our life. We lack knowledge and wisdom necessary for making good decisions, and we begin to suffer. Now watch this. When we suffer, go, go to this. We don't know who we are because we don't know where we came from. Therefore, what do we teach? Evolution. We don't, we, we've, we've said that, okay, surely this is a fairy tale, this book of Genesis, so we didn't come from God, so we got to find out our origin, where we came from. So we start teaching this damnable teaching that we came from monkeys, that we came from a one-celled animal, that somehow over thousands of years, and you've noticed we've not evolved. My son and I, we argue all the time about global warming. He says, Dad, you don't believe in it. I believe the earth groans. I believe there are cycles. I believe in the next 120 years, the earth will probably cool down. And then it'll heat back up. By then, I'll be gone. Amen. Amen. It's going to keep on doing this. Uh, you've seen the earthquakes in California. You've seen the hurricane in the Gulf. The earth is all, it's something always going on. It's as, as live as you are alive. And because of that, we're going to, and, and, and whatever generation is here is always trying to figure out why it is what it is. But when the next 120 years, this thing going to cool down, it'll heat up, it'll cool down. It'll heat. In other words, I'm telling you, we do not have the ability to destroy the world. Oh, y'all weak. I said, we don't have the ability to destroy the world. You can still use your hairspray, sir. Second, we don't know the meaning of life because we're cut off from the original purpose, so we seek places that leave us empty. We don't understand the meaning of life and why we're here. Every time I do a memorial service, a funeral, I try to remind folk that God created you for a purpose. You're here for a reason. We can't be fully productive because we don't know where our ability and strength come from. Therefore, we live a life that is under-challenged. One of the worst things about being a believer is being under-challenged. Amen. We, we hear the gospel, hear the gospel, but we're not challenged to do anything with it. David mentioned this gospel is about doing. It ain't about don'ting. It's about doing. Amen. Everybody say doing. Yes. Not don't. Yes. All right. We latch on to substitutes instead of the true source in an effort to find significance and peace. Therefore, drugs and alcohol abuse are rampant. Amen. We hanging on to something else because we got this, this void in us and we don't know how to fill it. So we try to fill it with everything else. So we latch on to substitutes. You know, look, I, I had substitute. You know what substitute teachers, what happened to them? Bless their heart, they get abused. Is that right? Bless a substitute. I've tried it once or twice. And I'm going to tell you, them kids are mean to you. And substitution can be that way. I want the real thing. We become fearful, apathetic, or overly competitive because we're trying to survive in an increasingly unnatural environment. When, when, like, when you know your purpose, it eliminates competition. I did not come here today wondering who's preaching. I didn't show up here today wondering, okay, I wonder how, who's going to do what today. I knew that Josiah was singing. I knew David was praying. I knew that Mike and him were at the door greeting. I, I knew I know the children's church leaders that are here. Everybody had a place, amen, and when you know your place, it eliminates competition. I ain't got to compete with nobody anymore. Can I get an amen? So this is very important. This is by being connected to him. When you're separated from your source, we have power without purpose, money without meaning, position without a passion for living, houses but not homes, having children that we don't nurture. We protect animals and trees, but we kill the unborn. It's amazing to me how we want to protect this, this, and this, but we miss out on this. 
Amen. It's like our thinking is so disconnected from our source. we got to have the reconnect. We thought we could live apart from our true source. Therefore, mankind has cut himself off from him. Uh, again, we go to Genesis chapter 2. God said, if you touch it, you're going to surely die. The day you rebel, the message Bible says, against me by disobeying my command, you will surely die. Now, he touched the apple. Did he die? No, he didn't die. So God wasn't talking about physical death. He wasn't talking about when you touch, because he lived hundreds of years. So it wasn't that you're going to die physically if you touch this. You're going to die in, in, in connection. You're not going to connect with me anymore. Now, pay attention to me here. The concept of death here is not referring to physical, but it's just spiritual. Rather, death refers to the severing of the relationship man had with his creator, his source. It was the demise of man's identity, his sense of self-image. We didn't know who we were anymore, the self-worth, the disconnect. It led to the great flood with Noah, Abraham's sojourning, Moses' difficulties, David's victories and defeats. The whole reason Jesus came to earth was to reconnect us back to our source. When one declares independence, in other words, you have to create your own identity. So what do we got today? This uh, gender issue. I don't know if I'm a boy or a girl. A man or a woman. I shouldn't even have to preach on this. I shouldn't even have to mention this. This, this thing, and, 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 it's, and again, I'm not trying to be mean toward folk who, who are, are screwed up with their gender thinking. I'm telling you the reason we've got this problem is we disconnected from our source. We started acting like God was, was, was uh, uh, well, you know, she. I've heard people say she, talking about God. God ain't no she. He's a he. The scripture is very explicit about it. The, the scripture shares that Christ came to show us God. It wasn't a put down. God is always for women's rights. He's the one that stood up for them in the very beginning. When you read scripture, he's always defending the women when others would make them walk behind. He was always connecting with them at the well. With the woman with the issue of blood, uh, Jairus' family, he was something about him that he wanted to help folk. And, and we act like we can't, uh, you know, I don't know if I'm male or female. Look, when you connect with him, you know who you are. Amen. Amen. I know who I am. Amen. He created me thus. I, I am a male. I don't have to ask questions. I know that. Uh, you know, so it's very important to, to strengthen people, not put them down because of this confusion. The confusion is because of the disconnect. They've disconnected from the source. And when you reconnect to him, then you start realizing God created me to be a man, to be a husband, to be a father, to be a grandfather, a woman. He created me to be thus. Amen. And to have this. And, and all of a sudden, life starts having some clarity. You become responsible for your own destiny. The problem is without being connected to the source, failure is inevitable. My, my future is up to me. How I do it, and it's got to start today. Can I get an amen? amen? The natural result of separation, true death, spiritual death, is the spirit being detached from its source of life. When Adam rebelled, it's the Hebrew word for sin. Against his source, the inevitability penalty was death and separation. If we cut ourselves off from the source, it, 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 we suffer. We suffer, not the source. God's not up there suffering because we cut ourselves off. If the fish is outside the water, it ain't the water's fault. If the bird's outside the air, it ain't the air's fault. Amen. The issue is result. Everybody say result. The statement, you shall surely die, wasn't a threat but a result. The same when we cut ourselves off from the body of Christ or one another. I can tell you that we need one another to sustain life. Amen. That we're blessed with one another when we're connected. So the issue to me was this one word result. It wasn't God was threatening us. He was saying, Look, you can drive that car. That I, I fill up my truck. It'll say 380 miles. You go 380 miles what you got in this tank. But when that 380 is up, you better decide if you want to reconnect. And if you don't reconnect, you're sitting on the road in a real nice truck. 
Amen. You've got to reconnect the thing. You've got to refill it. You got, and this is the way life is. I don't know how you do during the week, but there comes a time I got to reconnect. I got to fill up again. I got to get closer again. And, and, and if I can stay filled up, in fact, I actually looked over Sister Lori last night and I said, You ever think we even going to get us an electric car? I was watching that adver advertisement. Electric car. I cannot, Ed, see me for the life plugging my car in. It don't make no sense to plug. I mean, if you've got a plug-in car, God love you. I'm not picking on you. I'm just saying I don't see me here in Texas. I want to drive gasoline till gas ain't no more. Amen. Because it's just something about hearing the budding budding. You get in an electric cars, all you don't hear nothing but. <laughs> and I'm so, it's like, we're so afraid we're going to be a, too far away from a plug in. Yeah. Are you kidding me? You don't even bring your cell phone unless you know there's a plug in somewhere near. I was at a restaurant the other day with my son. I said, why are we sitting here? And I looked around, he plugged into the wall. Now I know why we're here. He hunting for a plug in. Amen. Likewise, if a person takes himself out of a connection with God, Think about spiritually. It's only a matter of time before destruction sets in. The creator brings life, not death into the world. Life is in the source. Whoever stays attached will have life. The message says in John 15, I read this out of the NIV last week, but now listen to it in the message. Live in me. Make your home in me, just as I do in you. In the same way that a branch can't bear grapes by itself, but only by being joined to the vine. You can't bear fruit unless you are joined with me. I am the vine. You are the branches. When you're joined with me and I with you, the relation, intimate and organic, the harvest is sure to be abundant. Separated, you can't produce a thing. Anyone who separates from me is dead wood, gathered up and thrown into the bonfire. The word living, it's not about doing more for him. It's about being more with him. And I preach this because I'm a doer. I'm always doing. I'm always doing. And I got to back off every now and then and say, be. Just be human. Just be with him. Just chill out just a little bit and hang out. If you're fishing with your grandson, be with Jesus for a little bit. Use that time. If you're mowing and you're trying to do something, chill out a little on that mow and just be with him and talk to him. I've got to keep this vital connection alive. And then there are people in my life that I keep reaching back out to. And I'm saying, God, I just want to reconnect with them because they've been a part of my life for a long time. I just don't want to let them go. And, and there's something about connecting and being. Everybody say being. being. We're human beings, not human doings. But yet doing is so much a part of what we do. I, I, I understand that, but I just want to live, to remain, to stay closely connected, to settle in for the long haul. Living and abiding, it's all about the most important friendship in your life. You know, I came back from Camp Joseph and, and Jill was telling me about the wonderful things and Mikey and all this other stuff. And I'm listening I said, but now try that for 52 weeks out of the year. <laughs> Preach that gospel for 52 weeks out of the year. And sometimes four times a week. Try to stay on this because this is life. Amen. It ain't about one week at camp, which is great. Thank God for it. But we got to live this thing and stay connected and keep the fire. Amen. And keep encouraging and stay on one another. Ooh, the Bible says, you know what it says? Spur one another on. Spur. I got to dig my spurs back out. There ain't some folk I love that need a good spurring. If I jump up on you back, you better get to bucking because I'm telling you. <laughs> Spur one another on. Encourage one another. Push one another. Amen. In other words, we need this. Living, abiding is all about the most important friendship in your life. Your, 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 your life with him. Psalm 42, 1. David said, as the deer pants for streams of water, so my soul pants for your God. Again, I've read that it's very seldom will you ever see a deer's tongue hang out. In the sense of... Being panting like a dog. You know, some of your dogs, I know, got issues. They got liquor problems. <laughs> like some people I know. Uh, but the, 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 that deer, that tongue hanging out, they thirsted. David said, I saw a deer with his tongue out. I know he was thirsty. As the deer pants for the water, so my soul pants for you. Amen. I need you. I, I abide with you. Seek, long for, thirst, wait for. David's passion to abide went into Psalm 27, 4. One thing I ask of the Lord, and this is what I seek, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, to gaze upon the beauty of the Lord and to seek him in his temple. It wasn't about the house. 
I know we make it a lot of times, but the house is where he met with him. The house is where he understood his presence. If I can get near the house of the Lord, if I can stay there, I can gaze upon his beauty. Amen. I can see. There was something just, David is manly man. David is strong, calloused hands, warrior. David's a man who was, who was uh, uh, separated men's heads from their shoulders. David's a man who chased down 200 Philistines and removed their, yeah. Uh, David is that guy. And yet David said, you know what I really like? I like going to church. I like being among the presence of God. I like gazing upon his beauty. I don't, he had such revelation, understanding, the, the desire to stay connected. Everything about, David wasn't perfect, but he wanted to connect. Everybody say connect. Yes. Amen. It's somebody to set apart. How do you connect, Pastor? Set apart some time to build relationship with him. Amen. Savor God's word to you. Even today as I'm preaching, grab hold of a scripture or something. Savor it. In other words, you didn't savor when you were young. You just gobbled up food. But you get our age, get a little age on you. There's something about savor in it. It ain't about the bulk. It's about the flavor. Right? Salt, pepper, spice. <sighs> Getting hungry. You savor that food. And yet if you watch somebody enjoying their food, it's like, if you're a good cook, I'm not talking about TV dinners. You cook a mean TV dinner. No, 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 no. I'm talking about you're a good cook, and somebody's enjoying your food. It makes you happy, don't it? Oh, when you watch them enjoy. It's not that they shoved it down real fast, David. It's just that, that, they, that they enjoyed that food. They, they savored that. That's an important thing. You do the same thing with the Word of God. You talk and you listen to it. Write down your disappointments. It didn't work out the way you thought. Write them down. Write down your celebrations. Write down your confusions. Then ask him for wisdom. God, give me wisdom. I need wisdom on how I'm going to do it. How are you going to go through life without wisdom? How do you deal with the problems of life without wisdom? And if he asked me to ask for it, then do it. Wisdom, wisdom is so, this is real quick. A, 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 a tire on the lawnmower. <laughs> It, it went flat, sucked in the, the valve stem. Now, I'm 58 years old, but I'm staring at it, and I'm thinking, I can't put air. Every time I try to shove air in it, it shoves the valve stem into the rim. You follow where I'm at, age? So I, I ain't got no help. Ain't nobody around now. I'm pouring sweat, and I'm thinking, I got to do something, Kenny. And I remembered my dad's favorite tool, vice grip wire pliers. And I went to my toolbox, I pulled them vice grips out, and I yanked that stem out, and I clamped it off right there so it couldn't go back in so I could inject air in the tire. That's just wisdom. It doesn't make me smarter than anybody else. It makes me um, experienced. Yeah, that's the word. But I'm just saying, there's a time in my life I'd have never asked God for wisdom. But God, you ask him for it, and he says, okay, here, here's your idea, and, and you try it. You, we have to connect. Let me start closing here. Uh, Mark chapter 5. I don't have time to read this whole chapter to you, but I just want to get to a point here. Jesus crossed over by boat to the other side. When he got to the other side, there met him. He had already dealt with some demo, uh, demons and things of that nature. But when he got to the other side, a man came to him and grabbed him and said, Lord, my little girl's dying. You know the story. It's one of my favorite stories in the Bible. He, Jairus is his name, Pastor Jairus, and he's, he's pulling Jesus through the crowd. His daughter is 12 years of age. Great time of life, right in between, the betweenities of life. And he's pulling Jesus through the crowd. And as he's pulling him through the crowd, the Scripture says that there was a woman there. Amen. And this woman had a disease within her body. As the large crowd began to move, she heard the name Jesus. Everybody say Jesus. Jesus. Say it a little louder. She heard his name, and something began to well up inside of her. I'm going to tell you what it was, a desire for connection. She wanted to connect with him. She wanted to stay with him. So, so she hears the crowd, amen, yelling out his name. And the Scripture says that she went in through the crowd, and she touched the hem of his garment, the, 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 the cloth there, or however you want to say it. And immediately, and this is the amazing thing, immediately the blood stopped flowing in her body. She knew it. And then Jesus stopped, and he said, who touch my clothes who touched me i always find this amazing because 
everybody, the scripture says, was pressing around him. They're pushing on him. They, they, he's, he's, he literally, in, it's like a, a paparazzi frenzy. Everybody, he's, he's like a celebrity now. And he's moving through the crowd. The man's yanking him through the crowd, trying to get to his daughter. Everybody's pressing on him. His disciples are there. And then this woman comes up behind him, and she just touches the hem of his wranglers. And when she does, uh, something happens. And she stops in her tracks. She's on her knees, and she stops in her tracks. And after she touched him, he, man, he stops, and he said, Who? Touch me. Now, everybody's pressing on him. And again, this is where I'm telling you, when he chose Peter, he chose a man that was so inept, so goofy. Yeah, you ever just looked at people and said, Jesus, why? Why did you pick that one? Why would you choose that one? Or maybe in your own self, why me, Lord? Why would you pick me? The scripture says that Jesus stopped and he asked the question, who touched me? And Peter said, answered the question. It's a rhetorical question. Y'all understand rhetorical? Michelle, you understand rhetorical? Who broke this? That's rhetorical. If your dad ever asks you who broke it, don't answer it. He already knows it was you. He's calling attention to the situation. Who drove all the gas out of my truck? Don't answer that. You know who drove the gas out of the truck. He's drawing attention. So Jesus stops. Who touched me? Who connected with me? Who drew something out of me? Who wanted a miracle more than all of these people who just go into church today? Who? Who did it? Peter said, Lord, everybody's touching you. Like somehow he going to get kudos for that answer. <laughs> Jesus said, no, 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 no. Somebody drew something from me. Somebody pulled something. Somebody understood that I am the source of life. And they pulled something out of me. And he turned around. And there she was. This woman. And she had a hand shaking into the air. It was me. I touched you. And Jesus looks at her. And said, be whole. Be whole. Get, get, back up one, one passage. Then she said, when she had heard of Jesus, came in this press behind and touched his garment. For she said, if I may touch his clothes, I shall be whole. Her desire to connect was greater than all the rules against her. Sister, you ain't allowed to touch the man of God. Sister, you ain't allowed to get near a crowd. Sister, you got a disease in your body that says that every time you gather around men and women, you are to yell the word unclean. Every time, because that disease you got might jump on somebody else. So by law, she's got to yell unclean every time. She ain't saying it. I'm tired of saying it. I'm tired of saying I'm a sinner. I'm tired of saying I'm a glutton. I'm an adulterer. I'm an addict. I'm a, I'm a drunkard. I'm tired of saying it. Fed up with it. I need a change in my life. I'm tired of hearing it. So I'm going to come in and touch his him. And I'm going to see a change in my life. And she comes in and she touches his him. And he said, woman, thou art whole. Go in peace and be free from your plague. That which your disease, that which has hurt you. That woman got up. She's free. The blood stopped flowing. The shame is gone. I ain't got to say the word unclean no more. I ain't got to tell everybody how bad I've been in my past. It's over. It's over. Sometimes all we need is to reconnect with the source. I believe I'll stay with him. I believe I'll stay connected with him. I believe I'll do it on Monday and Tuesday and the rest of the week if I can just stay with him. Stand with me. If you Her touch 
stopped the crowd, turned him around, made him inquire, got his attention. Why? When we worship, it's not trying to show off, but it is trying to get his attention. I just want your attention. I'm in need of this right now. I stood on the threshold of disasters. I've seen where it looked like there would be no tomorrow for you and for me. And I've seen us connect with him and watch him turn things around. My, as you, you have the same fear that I do. I don't have a lot of fears, but this one fear I have is that I, I will forget the goodness of God in the land of the living. All the good things that God has done for me. I like when people remind me, do you remember this? Do you remember all night fellowships? Do you remember God doing this in your life? Do you remember going to Georgia and your best friend getting saved in the little church in Marion, South Carolina? I remember. I can't forget these things. I got to remember the miracles. I drive around on the property and I see what God has done. I'm in this building. I see what God has done. It all came through a touch, staying with him. Paul's passion for connection, he said in Philippians, I consider everything a loss compared to the surpassing greatness of knowing Christ Jesus my Lord, for whose sake I have lost all things. Whose sake I lost all things. I consider them rubbish that I may gain Christ. We're Americans. We hate losing stuff. We hate somebody stealing our stuff, taking our stuff. Oh, we'll defend it. We'll get our guns. Hello. I've said it. I shoot you. We just sat away. Paul said, let me help you. As long as I can have Christ, everything else is rubbish. I count it all loss. It ain't no good. We're not there yet. It's going to take us a while. I'm not asking you to let your stuff be confiscated or taken or stolen or anything. I just think an attitude that says, God, let everything else go as long as I can know you. Bow your head just for a moment. There is a need in this room for miracles today. I'm talking about life-changing miracles. Where a woman touches a garment, gets healing, changes her whole life. God, I'm praying for miracles today. I pray for my pastor for a miracle today. That you pull him through that emergency room, out of that hospital, back into his pulpit with strength and vitality. God, I pray right now for our children, our connection to our kids and our grandkids. God, you gave them to us to help us be the parent you called us to be. God, I pray for connection against diseases today. Come on, if you've got something in your body right now that you don't like no more, stretch your hands toward heaven. Reach out for a touch right now in the name of Jesus against diabetes and cancer. God, against uh, arthritis, all the things that's trying to pull us and hold us back. We pray in Jesus' name. We want to touch today. Lord, I'm reaching for friends that aren't here. People that have disconnected from the body of Christ. God, I pray for their reconnecting. God, I throw no stones. I throw no stones. I pray for the love and tender touch that you've got to draw them back in. I thank you, Lord, for those online today. God, that you would reach toward them. God, where they're at, those that are shut in. Ah, they're not just shut in. They're just listening in. God, open doors for them. Give them the ability to go out. God, I love you. All I can do is ask it. Believe it and receive it. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Come on, bless his name. Amen. You could be seated for a minute. I didn't realize I'm going so long. Connection is so important. We have a lot of things that are going to be able for you to connect over the next few weeks. Amen. And I want you to avail yourself to them. Amen. Whether it be swimming, bowling, whatever it is we're doing as a body, amen, to do it together. I'll get our servant leaders to come up.
please forgive me. I do not understand all the giving online, but I know that you guys do. There's iPads, there's cell phones, there's uh, credit cards, however you do it. You're welcome to give your tithe and your offering on, on there. David, let me let Marie say something here. She's got a little flyer with all these things on it. If you need a tithe or offer an envelope, thank you for your faithfulness. If you're brand new here and you've not, you hadn't uh, understood the, the power of tithing, amen, understand that as we give to God, God will always bless that which we have left. It ain't about what you got, amen. What you got left over, watch him bless that. Amen? Yeah. Step out and do that if you would. Marie? Okay, we have um, several flyers that were given out this morning. I know that uh, each one of you should have gotten one or your family should have gotten one. Um, our bowling's coming up, our family bowling that we do every year before school starts. So uh, make sure you sign up in the back and get paid for that. Um, we need to get uh, that done right away. It's going to be on August the 4th. From 1.30 to 3.30, it's a Sunday after second service, and it's going to be at Max Bowl in Humble, and you have to pay and uh, before you actually get to go with us. So um, we need that payment before so that we can go ahead and reserve the, the lanes and everything. And how many is that for? Two? Okay. For now. Okay. And so um, we're going to be taking sign-ups from July 14th through the 28th. And children 16 and under are $12.00. The adults are uh, $15, and that's 17 and up. It's going to be $15 each. Um, this, this, this next flyer that I have is for the ladies. We are going to a conference, a ladies' conference. It's going to be on the other side of Houston. Um, and the, the conference itself is free, but uh, we're going to go ahead and spend the night at the hotel over there. And uh, you do have to pay for your hotel in advance. We need you to sign up, and you need to call and reserve your room. And that flyer should have every, all the information on there that you need. Okay? Um, the next thing I have, we're going ahead and giving out the flyer for sign-ups going to Canton. It's going to be for Zion's Lines, which is the motorcycle group, and the ladies' ministry. The guys are going to ride while we shop. So um, <laughs> the hotel information is going to be in the back, or you should have a copy of it. We do need you to sign up in the back as well so we know who all is going. And again, if you have any questions, feel free to come ask me or any of the ladies uh, that are going to be back at the back table. Also, swap today, right? Swaps today, that's uh, seniors with a purpose. That's 55 and up. Um, they're going to be meeting right after service. Make sure you all go to that. I mean, you will be blessed by Linda and Ken. They, they always have a great message for you. So I believe that's it. I'm going to have Miss Marie come up here every week and do announcements. <laughs> she describes it a little better than I do. Uh, let's see, is there anything else I need to think? I think you covered it all. Jewels for Christ, July 20th. Uh, talk to Miss Diane in the back. Uh, that's 10 a.m. to 1 p.m. Um, see details in the back. But, yeah, just talk to Miss Diane. She'll be back there. Uh, and, and listen, there's something. Oh, what, oh TLCC Swim Day. What's uh, Sunday, July 28th, after service, uh, everybody's welcome. Kids 8th grade and below must have an adult accompany them, please. <laughs> please, just saying. That's for Miss Marley. If you're going to bring your kids out, don't drop them off and leave. It's a family swim day, okay? <laughs> Enjoy your family. Uh, we're grateful for anybody that gave today. Uh, it's, it's not for us, though. It's for you. You don't give to help pastor, you don't give to help the church. The truth is you give because God asks you to. That's it. That's the reason we give. It's out of obedience. Today we're believing God for jobs and better jobs. More money, no some <laughs> sales and commission, checks in the mail, gifts and surprises, finding money, bills paid off, settlements, inheritance, rebates and returns, debts demolished, royalties received, Favor, success to the kingdom. <laughs>